A wildlife habitat is where an animal lives. It's where it eats, sleeps, reproduces and carries out its daily activities. It can be a small area or a very large area. Habitat is essential for maintaining a species. Without habitats, species lack adequate food supply and shelter and that can swiftly lead to malnutrition, disease and population loss. This can be a primary obstacle in successfully managing wildlife. Without adequate habitat or provision of replacement or rehabilitated habitat, there's little use in attempting to increase the population of an impacted species. Habitat manipulation is one of the most powerful tools which wildlife managers have for managing populations of wildlife in any area. Habitats are characterised by two key factors, physical features and biological features. Physical features are non-living components of the habitat, like soil, moisture, temperature, humidity and light. These factors are directly related to the type of organisms living in the habitat. For example, bats often live in habitats with low light intensity. Desert animals, on the other hand, live in habitats with high light intensity. Biological features include food and predator-prey relationships. Some habitats have readily available food or high numbers of producers. Others may have food scarcity. This influences species of population in the habitat. It can also affect the behaviour and diet. Food scarcity can cause changes in diet over time. Stresses can also affect genetic diversity. All living things also have a range, that is, a geographical area where they can be found. Some ranges are large while others are quite small. A range, though, is distinct from a habitat. Every animal has a certain distribution within its range. Distribution refers to the places within the range where a given species is found. Let's consider, for instance, a small arboreal frog. Its range is across Central America. Its distribution is mountains 2,000 metres above sea level. Its habitat is dense tropical rainforest. There are many ways to classify habitats. The simplest is by land or water. Using this classification, we can say that habitats are land-based or terrestrial, marine or freshwater. Many scientists and conservationists need more specific ways of classifying habitats though. One of the most common ways is to use biomes. Biomes are large regions which map specific areas based on common environmental or geological conditions. Biomes are large-scale communities which can contain several different ecosystems. Biomes contain flora and fauna. Flora and fauna that has adapted to specific large-scale environments within the biome. They're usually often defined by climate and the type of plant life. For example, a tropical rainforest versus a temperate rainforest. Different biomes can support different forms of life. 
A boreal forest biome, also known as a taiga biome, is found throughout the high northern latitudes. It has a cold climate with an average temperature below 10 degrees centigrade for up to 11 months of the year. It has nutrient poor soil with coniferous forests and moss or lichen ground cover. This landscape can support some large herbivorous mammals and small rodents and birds. Tropical rainforest habitats are the opposite to this. These rainforests consistently are warm and the seasons are determined by changes in rainfall rather than in temperature. With highly fertile soil and high rainfall, these areas are diverse in both animal and plant life. Animal species include primates, other mammals, birds and insects. Now a shrubland habitat is found across the Mediterranean, southern Australia and South Africa among other places. It has hot dry summers, cool wet winters, some shrubland has only low shrubs or bushes and others might have a sparse scattering of trees. Plants have adaptations to prevent water loss. Shrubland usually supports some species of small animals and birds that are adapted to summer drought. Temperate grassland is found in dry climates, such as in the centre of North America and Asia. This is grassland with scattered, often sparse trees, with seasonal precipitation and temperature changes. This habitat often supports large herds of grazing animals, carnivores and birds. Arctic tundra stretches across the far north in the northern hemisphere. Temperatures are around zero degrees Celsius or lower for most of the year, with a growing season of only four months. In the growing season we see grasses, sedges, dwarf shrubs, mosses and lichens. Tundra often occurs in large expanses of vegetation, but poor precipitation and drainage. Frozen permafrost means only the surface layer of the soil can be used to nourish plants. The habitat can support some mammals, large and small, but it's friendlier to insects and birds. <laughs> 